Many years ago, when you were still in your diapers, we made a video with this kind of an airtight terrarium, where the plants were locked in their ecosystem and had to struggle to survive. Cookie really misses that old terrarium, we had to leave it there when moving, so we decided to develop the project from scratch, but this time taking it to a new level. In addition to plants, we'll be locking up creatures that will have to get their food in a hermetically sealed container. First, we ordered a glass terrarium, made of super transparent glass that does not distort the image. So, it gives us a good quality picture of what is going on inside. With that aim, I had to skimp on the sausage for cookie. Our new terrarium will be even bigger, so that it can host more plants and animals. Stefan, this terrarium's not for you, you already have your own hamster house. And Cookie, well, you don't have your own house, so enjoy it for a while. Every time we touch the terrarium with our hands, we leave fingerprints on it, which are hard to remove. So let's avoid touching the glass. We make a stand out of a big wooden plate, measuring it and cutting it out to be a little bigger than the terrarium itself. Now let's attach the legs. And it's all done. Or rather everything is just beginning, because now we are going out to the forest, where we need to take some forest soil, forest plants and some forest animals. You may wonder why wouldn't we just buy soil in a store? Well, that's because it's dead and doesn't contain any living organisms. While from the forest, except for the soil itself, we get a whole variety of microflora necessary bacteria and micro-living creatures, which will help to run the necessary process to form a full ecosystem inside an enclosed space. The plants for our terrarium were also from the forest, as they perfectly adapted to this kind of soil, and will have the biggest chance of survival in new conditions. The well-known plantain is an excellent candidate, and while strawberries, perhaps after a while, will get us some fruit. Now it's time to find living creatures for our terrarium. We decided to look for them amongst the bark of an old tree and moss. As inhabitants of our terrarium, we'll have these small isopod crustaceans. Many people don't like them and are afraid of them, but in fact they are harmless, kind and even cute. I'm sure watching our terrarium videos, you'll change your opinion on them. The first time I took isopods in my hands, well, it wasn't very pleasant, but then I got used to it and we made friends. Just look how cute their antennas are. We got back home and continued preparing the terrarium. For the bottom layers of the terrarium, we used these small basalt chips, which will accumulate all the extra moisture. The next layer consists of forest soil. We deliberately left stubs and leaves in it, so that it would rot and serve as food for microflora. Then we put the plants inside, and I don't know which ones will survive and which ones will die, because despite the familiar environment, these conditions are quite unusual for them. We need to use a lot of different moss, which will absorb the moisture and serve as a sleeping place for our isopods. Also, we organized an area with such pieces of oak leaves. Theoretically, they are supposed to start to decompose, thus feeding the isopods and bacteria. Actually, we spent a lot of time organizing this terrarium, trying numerous combinations of twigs and plants, but in the end, we decided to put in the middle this piece of pine bark, which will not block the view while being a great shelter for our isopods. Now, it needs to be filled with water, so that all the soil is saturated, as well as there is some extra water accumulated at the bottom as a reserve. Water is the basis of life, and in abundant moisture, life is always developing much faster than in dry conditions. This poor ant accidentally caught onto the plants, and now he almost drowned in the water current. Well, our terrarium is ready, and all plants are planted, and there is still some space for those that may germinate from the seeds contained in the soil. Perhaps in the future, we will even get a crop of wild strawberries. 
Now it's time for our main inhabitants, who have already spent two days sitting in this box and waiting for us to settle them in their new house. We carefully pour them out on the bark in the center of the terrarium and watch what happens next. The first isopod joyfully rushes towards the leaves and ran right into them, probably eager to set up a home there. The others took their time and studied the bark on which we have placed them. These crustaceans are quite shy and spend a lot of the time hiding, not to be eaten by birds or lizards. But we hope that with time they will see that there's nothing threatening them and will behave more confidently. Since the isopods love moisture and plants, especially dead ones, they will not only feel good here, but also clean the terrarium of dead leaves. This option was not available in our old terrarium. Little isopods immediately start running around the terrarium looking for food, which is not very abundant here because there are no dead plants here yet. So they have to make do with what is there. Look how this little guy near his mother devours a piece of green moss. You can make out his little face and black eyes. He's like a little alien in an incubator. Their bodies are covered with a tough shell to protect themselves from small predators and enemies, with about 15 legs hiding underneath, which allows them to easily walk through the wooden terrain. One silly isopod got stuck and started drifting on a patch of grass. I took this moment to show in detail how they are arranged from below. We will find out if the plants and isopods can get used to this all, survive and even reproduce in these conditions, eating the food growing inside the terrarium. We're not going to seal the lid for now, so that we can observe and change the contents of the terrarium if necessary, before sealing it completely. And the coolest thing is that each of you can make a similar terrarium at home, and it's not necessary to have a large aquarium. You can get all you need in the woods, settle a few isopods in a regular jar and enjoy. All this is free, fun and very exciting.